Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of How Do I Do This Anyways? Uh, today's topic of conversation is going to be about tolerances and how you specify tolerances in your inventor parts and in, in your drawings. So as you can see, we can list our, draw, our tolerances here, but there's two main fashions of actually getting this to work that I'm going to show you. Okay, so to do this, we're just going to draft a really simple part. It's just a square with a hole in it and a pin that's going to go into this. Normally, you would have two different parts and put them together in as an assembly. But for here, that's not the focus here. We're just going to go ahead and make them one part. Now, before we get started on that, you have some housekeeping to do. You need to plug in your flash drive and you need to create a project folder for this. So when you've got your flash drive plugged in, go ahead and click that new folder button and call it something, uh, you know, descriptive, something like 2-1-1 tolerance inventor work, something like that, that'll let you know exactly what's in this folder. Then you can save all of your parts into that. You can save your part that you draft, you could save your drawings there, and that will keep your files organized. When we get into our other projects, whether it's the protective case or the automata, you definitely need to be working in project folders. That way you A, don't lose your files, and B, when you go and share those files, all the files that are necessary are right there. So make that file, just take a moment, create it, name it, and then we're gonna go ahead and save our first part to it. So, um, we're going to draft this thing. The measurements of it don't really matter. I'm just going to make a two inch block and a one inch cylinder. That's it. So we're going to go ahead and from your home screen, it's going to look something like this. You want to go new and then inventor part. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this in millimeters just for fun. And I'll show you some other neat tricks later on. So I'm going to go ahead and create this in millimeters. Drum roll. All right, I think we're in. I'm going to start my 2D sketch and I'm going to click right there. And I'm just going to drag out my rectangle. I'm going to click here to make a concentric constraint on the origin. I'm going to type in 50 millimeters, hit tab, type in 50 millimeters, hit enter. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit E and select that face. And then I'm going to select the, uh, or specify an extrusion distance of 50 millimeters. Yeah, hi kitty. So now I got a cube. Yay, no one cares. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna start this and I'm gonna put a sketch here and I want this circle to be right in the center of it. So I'm gonna project my edges or project the geometry of that face. And now I'm going to grab my circle tool and you see how it lights up with these lines off to the side when I get to the center points? Yeah, line that up. And I'm just gonna make this 20 millimeters. Now I'm gonna extrude. And I wanna select the circle, and I wanna select cut, and I wanna select through all, okay? Don't tell it a distance, go through all, okay? Because we want the hole to go all the way through. Click okie dokie. Now I got that looking thing. Good for it. So now oh, it's so much fun. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you something neat. I'm going to share this sketch. Edit, share sketch. All right. So what this is going to allow me to do is extrude that same sketch a second time. But this time I'm going to be going the opposite direction and I'm going to go, uh, let's call it 60 millimeters. Cool. Click okie dokie. All right, now I got this thing going on right there. Now what I need to do, I'm going to go ahead and click File, Save As, and now I need to make sure that I'm navigating into my flash drive and going in and finding your Tolerance Inventor Work folder. Now, I'm going to call this block and pin. I would suggest you put your initials on it. This is the second one I did to make sure I knew what I was doing. Click save. All right. Now, stop for a second. Let's check. My title popped up up here. 
Oh, by the way, if you ever see this in your upper right hand corner, you need to check your email. Autodesk wants you to re-up your account. They sent me an email. Now, let's go ahead and start a drawing file because this thing is as done as I'm going to make it for right now. File. We're going to go new and I want a drawing. Okay. I'm just going to click on it. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my sheet size. So I'm going to right click that and say edit sheet. Where is it? There we go. I don't want it size D. That's like 36 inches wide and 24 inches tall. I want size A because that's a normal piece of paper. Now, my title block, I want to, no, I don't want to edit the definition. I want to delete it. Then up here in drawing resources, click the plus button. Now I'm going to go ahead and select my title blocks and I want ANSI A. Yay, popped up with the title block. This makes me happy. All right, so uh, go ahead and place a base view now. Now, Inventor is a pretty smart program. It remembers, hey, you just made this. Now you're wanting a drawing. Do you want that? Since we do, we're just going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, if we didn't want that, we would have to you click that button and find it. Now, I'm going to rotate this this way because in my mind, it works better when it's going this way. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, you see how the cylinder, the hole cut out, is represented with those dashed lines for hidden lines indicating that there's a hidden feature? We can't properly dimension two hidden features. So, I'm going to show you a neat trick called the section view. This is where it's going to cut an imaginary line through this. Click once on the section view tool. And then you tell it the view you want the section view of. <coughs> now, you see how it popped up with that green dot? You want to come up a little bit. You see how it's still got that dashed line going down to where that green dot was? That means that we're still locked to the middle. You want to click it one time, drag on down, and go past where the end of it is. And then you want to click one more time. Then what you want to do is you want to right click and click continue. Okay. And now it pops up with those arrows pointed to the side and the arrows are always pointed to the opposite side of where this drawing is. You want to drop that drawing somewhere over here-ish. Okay. This is a section view. This is like if you took and you cut that thing in half and now you're displaying all of the hidden features with real object lines. And the best part about doing that is now you can actually dimension it, which is where we want to be today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my dimensioning tool, click here on the annotate tab and click the dimension tool. And I'm just going to go like arbitrarily, I'm going to click there and there, and I'm going to say that size. Oh, jays. Look at that. It's in inches. We don't like inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. Uh, hit escape a couple times to drop the dimension tool. Click it. Delete it. All right. Now we're going to come up here to manage, and we are going to, or I'm sorry, tools, document settings. And instead of being your default standard, we want to be ANSI millimeters. Click apply, click close, and now go back to that annotate tab and click the dimension tool again. And now click from here to there. And now looky there, we're in millimeters. Okay, now that's all good and fun, but I told you that there were two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the other way. Now, um, first off, before we go and move anywhere else, I'm going to hit File, Save As. You see how it populated the title or the file name of the part that's in there? It will always do that where it populates the file name of the first thing dropped in there. We just want to go ahead and say, yes, that's what we want because you see that dot DWG that's at the end. That's what tells us that this is an inventor drawing. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and annotate this in the drawing view. Okay. This is a lot of times the easiest way to do your 
dimensions and your tolerances. So when I click and I drop this thing, it pops up with this automatically saying, hey, you've got precision and tolerance here. You can do a simple sy symmetric constraint there, or you can do your limits, okay? So like for this, if I want this to be, um, let's say a clearance fit, I will always want the pin to be smaller than the hole. I want to make sure that the upper limit of the pin is smaller than the lower limit of the hole. So I can just go ahead and say my upper limit is 19.99 millimeters. And then the lower limit is 19.95. And then I click OK. It does that. It gives me that limit dimension. Now I can also go ahead and doing something similar. Click from here to here pull this out. Now I need to make sure that, that hole is always larger. So I can go ahead and do a deviation now. Okay. So I can go ahead and say it can be as large as let's say um, the upper limit is 0.05 larger. And the lower limit is not any smaller. Click OK. So therefore, this will always have a pin that fits into that hole. Cool, that's a clearance fit. Um, it's a very easy way to go ahead and change those in order to make the different types of pins and the different types of fits. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and, and say File, Save As, and I'm gonna call this clearance-clear. All right, cool. Now, popped up there. Now, I told you that there were two ways to get these dimensions in here. The other way is going back through your part file. Now, let me show you this neat little trick. We're going to come up here, and I'm just going to worry about the overall square block. Okay. First, I'm going to go ahead and show you that this dimension to this dimension. Come on, give me the dimension tool. That dimension to here is 50, okay? And then obviously the height is 50 as well. If I come in here and I go ahead and I edit this extrusion, I right click on the extrusion and I say edit feature. Now you see that little arrow that's right next to it? If I click that little arrow, I can add a tolerance to that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a symmetric tolerance there. And we're just going to call that 0.2 millimeters. Okay. All right. Now you see how that green arrow popped up? Yeah. You want to click OK here. Okay. Now I'm also going to go ahead and edit this sketch. You see how it was 50 by 50? I'm going to double click that to pop up with the ability to edit it. I'm going to click this arrow again, and I'm going to add a tolerance to that too. Okay. It's going to be a symmetric and I'm just going to call it point two again. And now I'm going to click. Okay. You can go through any flavor of um, tolerance. You feel like here, you can add it there, but you make sure that you click the green arrow to apply it and now you can see that it's applied there and let's go ahead and add it here as well type symmetric 0.2 okay green check all right cool so we're getting a variance of 0.2 millimeters plus or minus on that so when we go ahead and do this if I inspect this and just measure the side of this, it's still 50 millimeters. But inside of Inventor, it knows that it can be 50 millimeters plus 0.2 or minus 0.2 and still be within tolerance. It's carrying that data with it. Now, since I changed the part, I need to click Save. Okay. Now, I'm going to come over here to my block and pin. And I'm going to click dimension again, and I'm going to go from here to there, and it's still saying 50. Huh. 
Well, delete that. No, no, really. Drop the dimension tool. Delete that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve model annotations. So that tolerance you put into the part, into the model, is an annotation. So the first thing you need to do is you need to select the view that you want to retrieve those in. Click that one. And now you see how it's popping up with those? We want to select those features. Boom, boom. Good enough. And now we're going to click apply. Okay. And you know how they grade it out? That's because it's expecting you to want to select other views and start this process over again. Go ahead and click cancel. Now, if you know me, you know that you shouldn't have these dimensions here on your drawing. So we're going to go ahead and pull those off to the side. Now, special note, you see how this one says 50.000 plus or minus two zero zeros. That's because we specified that precision in the part view, whereas the dimension for this thing was just 50.00. But the precision here is just to two decimal places, whereas the precision that we specified in the part view was to three decimal places. So it's pulling these annotations from the part instead of asking you to put them in the drawing file. Just a small difference. If you get parts from online, like from catalogs and whatnot, they should have all the tolerances and annotations in it. And so you would just bring those on through with your assemblies and your drawings. Um, you'll get to that step later. But this is essentially how you do this. Now, what I would suggest you do is you go ahead and you annotate when you're done with your drawing because you need to make sure that you do a clearance fit, a interference fit, as well as a transition fit for the pin and the block. So this is going to be my pin and block clearance fit. Click okie dokie and now boom, it's right there. It's got my name there, it's got the date, it's got what the drawing of the thing is, the title of it is. Oh, that's just gorgeous. Let's just go ahead and click save. And then when you want to go ahead and turn this in, you have two options. For one, you can take a screenshot of this and post this onto a Google slide, and that way you can turn in all three of them. Or if you're turning in these for realsies, file, print, and you want to print to PDF, that's one way to do this, or file, export, PDF. And then you can make a PDF, and it'll save it in the same folder. PDFs are great. You can open PDFs on your phone. That means you can send dimension drawings to people from your phone. So uh, hopefully you help, or this helped you out. And if you have any questions, let me know. Take care.